It's a pleasure right. to have you. And to welcome. Be, yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. Right. It's so good to have you here. Right. Yeah. Now, Chris, I just uh, let's start off with this first idea. Now, this is something that I actually do believe. I do believe that the planet is doomed because of us, all of us. I want you to try, just try to dispel this. Well, there's a lot of you, there's a lot of us, and I'm going to agree with you. Oh. I'm going to agree with you what? that we are having absolutely enormous impacts on the earth. And some of those things are things we really wish weren't happening. And that our species going extinct, and we do want to do something about it. So what I'm here to say is not that all the bad things, or at least a lot of the bad things we hear about aren't bad, but that there is also a balance to that. Mm -hmm. The world's changing, and change is not synonymous with bad. For every species that declines or dies out in a particular area, often there are other species coming in and replacing them. So if I just give you one example from Britain, my own homeland, um, being rather prejudicial, alas, um, about foreigners, as we uh, rather a lot of my compatriots are, um, the we tend not to like the new species that arrive, and we tend to treat them as foreigners and not even count them on our biodiversity inventories. But in the last couple of hundred years, about 2,000, 2,000 extra species have established populations in the wild in Britain. And how many species have died out as a direct consequence of the arrival of those extra 2,000 species, including all of the worst invasive species you might heard of? How many? What's the answer, guys? Well, how many is it? It's a big fat zero. So it's effectively, there are species that have died out in Britain for other reasons, but not because of the arrival of new species, many of them assisted either uh, intentionally or in unintentionally by humans. So Britain now contains considerably more species than it used to a couple of hundred years ago because of humans, because we've transported species, because we have transformed some habitats into new types of environment and species have been able to move into these new agricultural environments into urban and suburban areas. And so the total diversity across the entire country is now higher than it was. And this turns out to be true for most regions of the world. Nearly every region of the world, as far as the data tell us, now contain more species than they used to just a century or two centuries ago. That doesn't stop it being bad that some species are dying out from the planet, but if we're talking about the biological resources that are around us within any country, then actually the trends, if you read them the way that I'm reading them, are actually as positive as they are negative. But Chris, I mean, surely when we look at the pollution in the oceans, the amount of plastic, the amount of damage that we're doing to the very important existing species, like apex hunters, like tuna, like like kelp dwellers that add a lot of oxygen, they keep the oceans fresh and revived, and we see that these species are really damaged. I mean, isn't that spelling doom? Because I hear from you what you're answering to this is, it's not doom that we're talking about, but I'm, I'm wondering how do we replace that damage? Well, the world is changing, and you have to appreciate that change is not synony synonymous with loss, and it's not synonymous with damage. So damage, yes, it's changed. Ocean acidification, I think, is, is arguably one of the biggest challenges. So we should still do things to stop these big processes of change, unnecessary pollution or so on. At the moment, the vaquita um, porpoise or dolphin um, is endangered globally. But in fact, no marine mammal has died out for a very long time now. In fact, um, no large of the large fish species that are being um, harvested, are uh, being fished for, has died out as an entire species. So some species are rarer, but given all of the changes, there are many species that are now more widespread and more common. So it's not that, so the losses, they're happening. 
but so are the biological gains. And for me, as an environmentalist and conservationist, I think it's as legitimate for us to think about how do we enable species to be successful and for new biological diversity to gain and new biological communities to come into existence, rather than spending our entire time fighting the losses, when often what we're doing is we're putting money into fighting against how nature is responding. So when you see change, it's because nature is responding and adjusting to the human altered world, rather than a lot of these biological changes actually being a risk to the whole way that the biological planet operates. All right, Chris, I would, what I'm accepting out of this, and I think you've burned this myth for me, because I think that this is what you've defeated here, yeah. that it's we're not, not doom. Get, that we're, we're not going to exterminate life on Earth, that's, that's for right. sure. So this is, this is burn. I will have to accept okay. that. It started to feel so good to be a, a bit of a fatalist, but I'm actually defeated on this. So right. consider this myth burned. Lovely. <laughs> Thanks so much. All right, surely, Chris, <laughs> surely, though, in all of what you're saying here, extinction, when we lose a species, animal, plant, or otherwise, we have to consider it loss. We're less. Right. Well, keep it up there. That is correct. <laughs> Just leave it. Yeah, absolutely. With the mathematical leave it. equation. I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get to the third one now because you've got to rip that one off before you can get to the third question. <laughs> but extinction is an absolute loss in the sense that once a species is extinct, well, there are a few exceptions, like, for example, where you've got frozen DNA and, of mammoths. We may eventually be able to reconstruct some of these extinct species from ancient DNA. But by and large, once a species is extinct, the dis there are going to be no more descendants of that organism running the planet. Of course, sometimes, though, extinction um, is providing an opportunity for others. So um, you look quite sort of hairy and um, sort of pale skin. OK, now, Chris, now thank you Now, that looks to me so like uh, there could be the odd Neanderthal gene in you. Could. So the Neanderthal species of human, uh, which used to live in this part of the world, um, uh, you're a lovely specimen, thank, thank by the way. So um, <laughs> the, that used to uh, live in this part <laughs> of the world, um, of course, hybridized with humans, and uh, somewhere between sort of the order of two, four percent of the genomes of every single one of us in this room is Neanderthal because okay. of this ancient hybridization. So the thing that we call Neanderthal is gone, but the genes live on happily. And for those of you who come from Eastern Asia, you are also the proud possessors of some Denisovan genes, another species of human that lived in Eastern Asia and as modern humans and the uh, hybrid forms with Neanderthal move further eastwards, we hybridize with uh, Denisovans. And so their genes live on in us. And indeed, it's genes of Denisovans, uh, the hybrids, that uh, allow Tibetans, for example, to live and particularly to breed at high elevation in the Himalayas. Those are genes that directly come from Denisovans. So there are actually quite a lot of species, which are species have gone extinct, but some of their genes still live on in existing species as a function of that hybridization. Well, I, I actually think I can take this off because in a sense, yeah, the mathematical element of we are less, yeah. but in reality, it doesn't mean that we're yeah. lesser or lost. Yeah. So, so I will accept this. This myth, Chris, is effectively right. burned. Yeah, OK. But we got to smoke this thing here. I'm yeah, getting away from that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Chris, surely, evolution right. so, can't keep pace. OK, so extinction. Poof, Extinction is one side of the uh, equation of life, if you like. Nearly every species that has ever existed has gone extinct, and they've been replaced by additional species. You look back over the last half billion years, and on average, for every species that has gone extinct, as we talked about, more than one new species has come into existence. And what we see now is, and the faster the rate at which the world's environment has changed, on average, 
the faster the rate of evolution. And that's a, a fairly well-known, well-understood phenomenon. Well, the rate at the which the world is changing at the moment is enormously rapid. So pretty much every population of every species is under selection. The atmosphere is changed all around us, particularly locally. Um, and um, so, so every population of every species contains genetic variation. The physical environment has changed because so much of the biological world has also changed. Is essentially every population of every species is living in new circumstances. Given the genetic variation that exists in every population, some individuals are surviving better than others. And so what we're seeing is very fast evolution. And in some cases, this is a pain in the ass for us, excuse my language, because, um, because if you are developing a new pesticide, for example, uh, an insecticide, on average, a new insecticide only lasts about 10 to 20 years before insects have overcome it and become resistant. But the key thing is, that we're losing species from the planet. But bizarrely, humans are also indirectly resulting in new species coming into existence. Such as? Well, such as the Italian sparrow um, and uh, a new kind of monkey flower that only lives in Scotland. So the Italian sparrow only exists because house sparrows came out of Asia. They met um, European sparrows that we now call Spanish sparrows. Uh, they hybridized, and there's now a new species, a hybrid species. Now, uh, and if we, this came into existence today, we'd probably train our guns on it. Because when a new American duck, the ruddy duck, arrived and started breeding with a European duck, we shot the hybrid. Similar things happening in New Zealand. But amazingly, in Britain, we've had something like seven to nine new species of plant come into existence in the last 300 years. Because like the monkey flower, where one ancestor came from South America, one came from North America, they met, had a happy time in Scotland, but their offspring were sterile. Then there was a genetic change which allowed them to reproduce sexually. So now we have a monkey flower that only lives in Scotland. So, if we've got about seven to nine new species of plant we should, that have arisen in the last 300 years just in Britain, of, and they're all through this sort of transport mechanism and hybridization, we should ask how many European species of plant have become extinct in the last uh, 300 years. Well, as far as we know, the records may be incomplete, but as far as we know, it's not a big zero this time, but the answer is one, a species of violet that actually still has surviving close relatives. So bizarrely, the changes that humans have brought around to the environment in Britain and Europe as a whole, for plants at least, has resulted in a net increase in the number of species on the planet. So what so, you're saying is actually is keeping pace from so a So what I'm saying is not like for like, of course. The yep. species that have gone are different from the things that right. are arising. But what I'm saying is that for all the losses that are going on, we should simultaneously consider care and take, in, take into account what the new species and new biological forms that are coming into existence, because that is the new world that's associated with all of us that is coming into existence. And that we should, in many cases, go with the flow a bit more, rather than trying to protect everything, save everything, and, and actually often trying to dismiss or even exterminate mm. the new things that are doing well in this human-dominated planet. So what you're saying, keeping the pace actually is going to consist of going with the movement itself much more effectively than resisting that change. We don't have a vast amount of global resource to throw at conservation, environmental management. Right. You could argue it should be more, but don't throw it at things which you are go where you're not going to succeed in 10, 20, 30 years' time. Well, Conservation's about the long-term future. Go with protecting the things that can actually be saved. Well, Chris, I have to say, you've defeated this one. This myth is burned. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> Ladies you. and gentlemen, give it up for Chris Thomas. Thank you so much. It was a Thank delight. You.